Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Today uh, we group 4 will present about the bid'ah things in Wahabi okay. uh, This is our group members and this is our content Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh My my name Ahmad Ifan Aqib bin Nasiruddin my metric number 121668 okay now i want to present about the uh, introduction of the my topic group uh, that is uh, bid'ah things among the wahhabi okay uh, in the introduction i want to share what is the uh, background of the wahhabi and what is the teaching of the wahhabi okay firstly i want to introduce who is the founder of the Wahhabi teachings? Uh, he is Muhammad ibn Abdul Al Wahhab. Uh, he was born from a family of fake scholar of uh, Hamali school. That means his father and his brother are uh, fake scholar of the Hamali school. Okay. The second point, uh, Muhammad ibn Abdul Al Wahhab uh, start to speak his teaching. That's me Wahhabi uh, in an oasis town of Huraimila around 1740 years. That's mean uh, in the 18th century. Okay. Thirdly, uh, Wahhabi believe they are from a Salafi group, <coughs> but the real terms uh, of the Salafi is uh, refer to the 3th century. As state in the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, peace be upon him. Okay, then uh, the 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 fourth point, uh, they also uh, con uh, themselves as a muhyidun. That is uh, the term muhyidun uh, means uh, near with uh, God. So they believe uh, they are very near with a God. That's why they all they reject all action that uh, are seen as shiri. <coughs> For the example, uh, we sit uh, to the tomb, but in the Malaysian, uh, we sit uh, to the tomb uh, as a custom from uh, Malaysia. Uh, that's why uh, all Malays uh, will visit to the tomb after finish the idolatry, after pray the idolatry. Okay. Uh, then uh, they also reject the uh, uh, read the tahlil and yasin every day. Now, I would like to share about the issues of Tahlil ceremonies for the death of Muslims. Tahlil is the practice of reciting a string of verses from the Quran out of remembrance and with the goal of giving the reward of reading them to a deceased person. Tahlil is derived from the Arabic term Tahlil, which denotes reading the phrase La ilaha illallah. One of these verses is read during Tahlil events in states there is no God who has the right to be worshipped other than Allah. Tahlil according to Imam Shafi'i is an evil heresy. Certainly, not a single Muslim forbids Tahlil. However, what is meant by the term Tahlil here is an event that is known by the community which is gathering at the house of the dead while eating and praying for the corpse to be blessed by God. Ijma ulama agreed that the prophet, his companions and the imams never have a tahlil. There is evidence of the Shafi'is madhab which shows the heresy of the tahlil event. Among them, the proof is the Shafi'is madhab which is muqtamad. There is this forbidden to offer talismans to the dead family after three days of the dead's death. It is also proven that the Shafi'is mazhab sees the actions of the diseased family who prepare food 
so that people gathering at the family home of the dead is a matter of innovation. In conclusion, it is not necessary uh, that we cannot perform good deeds if the Prophet of Allah never did them. In fact, doing so is encouraged if it benefits the community. Next, the issue of celebrating the Prophet Muhammad birthday Maulid Nabi. The second issue that will be discussed is the issue of celebrating the Prophet Muhammad birthday Maulid in our society. The meaning of Maulid is to commemorate the birth of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which is on 12 Rabiul Awal in on in the Hijrah calendar in Mecca. The word Maulid or Milad comes from the Arabic word meaning birthday. The celebration of the Prophet's birthday aims to remember, cherish and glorify the birth of the Prophet. According to the records of Sayyid al-Bakri, the history of celebrating the birth of the Prophet was done by Al-Muzaffar Abu Sa'id, a king in the Irbil district of Baghdad. The Wahhabis against the celebration of the Prophet's birthday for several reasons. Undoubtedly, Wahhabis are the only group in Islam that prohibits the celebration of the Prophet's birthday. From saying it is an act of heresy to acting dishonestly by cutting the statements of Hadith scholars to justify their own opinion. Moreover, there are many worship practices or traditions that are considered heresy by the Wahhabis such as the birth of the Prophet, Tawasul, Istirosa and visiting the Prophet's grave. From numerous perspectives, the Wahhabis are diametrically opposed to the Sunnah wal Jamaah understanding. People who do not agree with the Wahhabi, people are labeled heretics although the Wahhabi doctrines are deemed true among them. Celebrating the Prophet's birthday or the month of the Prophet's birth does not mean that we glorify the Prophet or attribute him to one of the divine attributes. In addition, Sayyid Ahmad Zaini Dahlan explained, Rasulullah saw, her, saw has the right to be praised and glorified. Among the forms or of glorifying is rejoicing on the night of the Prophet's birthday, reciting prayers and zik, feeding people who also celebrate the Prophet's birthday and other good deeds done by the community. As long as the practice in commemorating the Prophet's birthday does not deviate and dismiss good acts, then the ceremony is valid. On the other hand, the commemoration is a form of gratitude for Muslims because God has brought People like Prophet Muhammad who have succeeded in conveying religious teachings that lead to goodness and peace. The Prophet's presence, the Prophet's presence shines a light on a world that was before covered in darkness in, in, and ignorance. In conclusion, Bid'ah is classified into two types, Bid'ah Hasanah, Good Innovation and Bid'ah Dalalah, Bad Innovation. Bid'ah Hasanah is permissible as long as it does not contradict Islamic or Sharia law. It is not required that we cannot conduct a good practice if the Messenger of God never did it. It is even recommended if it benefits the community. For example, commemorating the Prophet's birthday can create the unity of the Islamic community based on the pure and holy teaching of Islam. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I will explain about the last issue, which is Salawat Nariya. The meaning of Salawat is an Islamic complementary Arabic phrase that includes the salutation of Prophet Muhammad. Salawat Nariya is known as Salawat Tafrija, but it's called Nariya because Sheikh Nariya created it. It is intended to honor Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for his efforts at the time to disseminate Islam and establish Tawheed. Salawat Nariya falls into Bid'ah Hasanah that is beneficial since it contains prayers and praises for the Prophet. Next, for the solution, the issues can be overcome with the perspective of Ali Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Also, Wahhabis are known as a group that against the belief of the Sunnah. First, Ahli Sunnah allows practice such as praying for the deed or tahlil that is included in Bid'ah Hasanah. Rasulullah SAW taught Sita Aisyah to say greeting at the cemetery by praying for them. And second, Maulid Nabi from the perspective of Ali Sunnah wal Jama'ah is a way to show joy and respect to Rasulullah by reading the verse of the Quran, Tahlil, Prayers and Talks. In fact, Rasulullah SAW shows grateful for his birth by fasting on Monday. And lastly, the practice that do not contradict with the teaching of Islam, like Salawat Nariya, is not permitted, even though it is made by Islamic scholar. 
As a conclusion for this study, the misunderstanding of Muslims still exists. The issue has made Muslim debate the issue of caliphate. For this reason, Muslims should bring issue of innovation that conflict with the Islamic faith and Sharia such as the cultivation of customs and culture of ignorance which is nourished through superstition. Instead of discussing the issue of Tahlil and Talqin, which still has element of goodness even though it was never done by the Prophet. For this reason, any action and practice based on the welfare of the people should be pursued because it is in line with the Makosid of Sharia. Right. That's all from us. Thank you.